I'm the librarian, and I came to read. Wake up out of your, wake up out of your sleep. Wake up out of your sleep. It's time for Game of Thrones. Let me tell you something. I was sitting down there about to watch the uh, first episode of this damn season. I was like, is this really real? Like, someone pinched me, sis, because we have, we've spent the better part of, what, two years waiting for this? <laughs> I am ready, and I told everybody, like, girl, we, we gave y'all ample time. We're going to be spoiling it. We're going to be live tweeting it. We're going to be talking about it on social media, and that's just that. You better just stay off if you don't want to see it, okay? And y'all already know how we do it. Around here at Adrian Expression, I'm just going to talk about the things that stuck out. Things that stuck out at me, okay? Like Jamie's peen used to stick out for Cersei. I'm going to talk about the things that stuck out. Let's talk about it from the beginning. Let's get into it. Da Daenerys and Jon Snow coming in with Unsullied, the dragons, Dothraki, all that shit. They coming in. Arya was standing on the sidelines like she a ch little cheerleader. And she saw Jon. She wanted to go up to his ass, but she was like, I don't know, girl. Maybe I'll do it a little bit later. So while everyone was screaming and shouting and hooping and hollering because the dragons were flying, ah! you know what I mean? Ah! They were drag, you know, the people in Wintertown was just like, oh, what the fuck's going on? We ain't seen no dragon in centuries. What's the, what's the tea? Uh, Arya was like, oh. It was like she was singing a the fucking theme song. We're gonna touch it. And so was Daenerys. She looked up, oh, that's my baby. It's everybody else around her fucking screaming. Girl, I am hollering, okay? So they got their asses into the uh, courtyard, and Sansa was giving them the ice cold ass looks that she should have used in season one when everybody was trying to take her away from her goddamn family. No shade. Now, I can't really blame Sansa too much because the, what we've heard about Targaryens and the fact that uh, Daenerys' father burnt up uh, a bunch of Starks and shit, we can't really blame Sansa too much as much as I don't like her ass. Uh, but she came, Daenerys came into that goddamn courtyard and, and was just like, hey sis, what's the tea? Like, I'm so happy you're as beautiful as Winterfell is. Like, I love it. It's so amazing. And Sansa was like, all right, girl. <laughs> Sansa was like, all right, sis. All right, sis. Get the fuck out my face, sis. When the fuck is yours, just do what the fuck you got to do and get out of my face. I was like, all right. Like, I understand your concerns, Sansa, but, like, let's be careful. Sis does have a bunch of armies and two dragons, so you might need to shut that shit on up. Now, while they're in this motherfucking the Great Hall at Winterfell, a little bear stands up and just like, sis, what the fuck's going on, Jon Snow? I know that Sansa said your ass was playing with broomsticks, but it seems like you went down to the goddamn uh, Dragonstone was playing, playing with pussy. And that's, like... You ain't no king no more. Like, what's going on? Like, we got an answer to this woman who came in here on some goddamn dragons. Now, meanwhile, I'm happy that she she came in on a horse and not the damn dragons because that shit would have been seen as a damn threat. <laughs> oh, but this shit was so shady because Lil Bear came in there and was not playing no goddamn games. And John was like, look, sis, y'all are getting mad at me. And this goes back to one of the stories in George R. R. Martin's um, uh, books about the king who knelt in the north um, when Aegon Targaryen came and tried to conquer, well, not tried to conquer all the fucking seven kingdoms, um, and instead of having all his fucking people burned, the king in the north at the time said, you know what, girl, let's just bend the knee. We don't need to fight this motherfucker. He got dragons. Like, let's just bend the knee. And people were mad at him for that. But they, he saved their lives. You know, he became warden of the north instead of king of the north. I forget which Stark it was. Um, but yeah, people were pissed at him. And even to this day, he's known as the king who knelt. So it's just like, girl, you can't please everybody, even when you're saving their goddamn lives. It's like, girl, <laughs> what is going on? So we saw this cute Arya. Let me see Arya guess. No, first, Sansa dragged the shit. <laughs> Sansa dragged the shit out of Tyrion. I am crying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tyrion was like, yeah, girl. Yeah, girl, Cersei gonna send her army up sis. Don't worry about it, girl. We got it all handled. And Sansa was like, are you serious? <laughs> Sansa was like, are you serious, girl? Do you really think Cersei's gonna fucking send these guys? Sansa was like, at one point, sis, I considered you to be the most clever man on the goddamn planet. Like, what? What happened? <laughs> you really think that? You really think she? That's what she said. You really believe her that she really finna send these armies up to help your ass? Okay, sis. Arya and John reuniting. That was really cute. They had a little um, back and forth about Valerian steel. I wonder why Arya did not show John her Valerian steel dagger while he was bragging about Longclaw. Like, I don't know. But it was a really cute reunion. I'm glad they hugged. And she was just like, girl, I don't know what you're doing, bending the knee to this motherfucker, but I do love you remember that Sansa just trying to protect us and that's it. So Kyber gonna walk up to Cersei like this look like I don't know what you think you got going on but the wall has 
falling and the, the dead are marching fucking styles. And Cersei was like, good. I was like, girl, you in this fucking tulip mushroom built ass wig, you gonna have to go somewhere, sis. <laughs> so as she leaves, we see the Golden Company about to make it to shore. They make it to the throne room and they tell her what they have. They don't have no damn elephants. And in all honesty, I just think that HBO said, look, girl, y'all getting these dragons at damn near every episode. We ain't got no time for no CGI elephants. Y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> so ain't no elephants, but Cersei was like, all right, girl, whatever. I'm glad I got the Golden Company and that's that. You know what I'm just like, no, wait, sis, like, I did all this fucking work and I get, can I get a crumb of pussy and like Cersei was just like girl I told you after the goddamn war and it's funny because I know Cersei be like girl go on the front lines and fight for me <laughs> so she could call that marriage off but you know Euron is just not having it and she knows the only way to keep this motherfucker in, in line is to open up open up like Pandora's box and then she looked back like, girl, just come on in the room, girl, and just let's get this shit over with. So that's what happens. I think that Yara was rescued way too quickly in the season. I don't know. Like, maybe they wanted to get all the bullshit out of the way. A lot of things happened in this episode, I think, happened way too quickly. But whatever. Um, it, you know, it's there. We're, we're getting the season. We need it. But I was just like, okay, she came in there. Theon came in there while uh, Euron was giving fish dick, saltwater dick, you know what I mean? Um, an anemone dick, <laughs> coral reef dick. To Cersei, while Euron was getting his rocks off, uh, Theon came into his ship, knocked a couple motherfuckers out, killed them, rescued Yara. Yara had butted his ass like, girl, did you really leave me on this motherfucking ship? Uh, <laughs> and then that's that. Like, they went out, Theon said, like, girl, I gotta go fight with the Starks. I need to redeem myself. And I think that that's where he may die. No shade. And Yara said, okay, I'll go take back the Iron Islands just in case Daenerys needs some place to regroup after she gets her shit rocked by, by the Night King in Winterfell. And I know that's exactly what's gonna happen. I think she's gonna make her way back to Dragonstone and not the Iron Island stuff. This is an interesting scene. Bron is given like a little bow and arrow thing. What the fuck is it called? I don't know, girl. Whatever this shit is. The same thing that um, Tyrion used against his damn father uh, while he was on the, while I'm on the shitter. You know what I mean? Tyburn gives that shit to Bron. It's just like, girl, look, we'll pay you a bunch. We'll pay you ahead of time in advance if you go down there and kill, kill um, Jamie and Tyrion. And I'm just like, okay, this will be the determining factor in Bron's um, character arc. Will he really go through with this shit? Or will he grow as a person and be like, girl, money ain't worth all this shit. Like, I'm friends with these motherfuckers. I ain't gonna kill them. You know, so we'll see what Bron decides to do. However, I think this is foreshadowing for somebody else. No shade, because as I think the whole show has been going on, they've been saying, they've been telling Daenerys, like, girl, all it takes is one arrow. They've been saying it multiple times, like, girl, you riding this big ass dragon, that's cool. But all it takes is one damn arrow and you're done. You're out of here. So um, do what you will with that. So Daenerys and them was walking around Winterfell while Varys and Tyrion and and then all right, the top talking shit. And Daenerys is just like, your sister doesn't like me, especially that after that dragon comment. Like, girl, I would, what did Sansa say? Like, girl, I expected, I put away food for you know Winterfell, our house, but I didn't put away no food for the Sully, the Dothraki, and all these damn dragons. And Sansa was like, girl, what do dragons eat anyway, girl? And like, she did a hair flip. And Sansa and, and Daenerys looked over like, girl, anything they want? Any more questions, sis? Because I can, I can be like, hey, sis, Drogon, you good? Come here, come here. I got some food for you, sis. That's it. That's all she got to do. So, you know, that tension was there, and it needs to go away very quickly, because Bran said, I forgot to say that shit. When that, them hoes were shading each other in the fucking courtyard, Bran said, bitch, we don't have time for this bullshit. We don't have time for this shit. If you get your ass on into this fucking great hall and start creating some strategies, because the Night King got your goddamn dragon, and the wall is down, and he's marching fucking south. And Daryl's like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Got <laughs> yes, shut the fuck up. We got some work to do. So Daenerys, and later in the episode, she was not happy about that shit. And she's like, girl, she needs, I am her queen. And she, if she does not respect me, dot, dot, dot. I'm just like, sis, Daenerys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna burn one of the fucking Starks? <laughs> girl, like, I love my good sis Daenerys. She's my fave. But girl, like, you, girl, <laughs> you need to calm your ass down. So then the Dothraki came to Daenerys and John was just like, look, sis, these dragons ain't eating no shit. Like, girl, we, we fed them frosted flakes. Like, we we even broke down some honey bunches of oats and Captain Crunch. Like, these these dragons ain't fucking eating nothing. Now, goddamn thing, bitch. I mean, they eating a couple sheep and shit, but that's about it. And, and Daenerys was like, God damn it. And John was like, what? It's like, she's like, the dragons are barely eating. And then so, well, what you gonna do? Take them for a fucking joyride? Girl, if you hoes don't kill a bunch of cows or some shit and find and give 
them to feed feed Drogon. They don't not like to be all cold in the north like this. It, like the dragons ain't eat, so we gonna fly them around. I never, I didn't understand that shit. That's why you gonna lose another one, Daenerys. I, girl, give them dragons to me. I don't know how to take care of them. So they go for a ride, bitch. Daenerys hops on top of Drogon. Was just like, sis, come on, cause Rhaegal is just cuddling up to Jon Snow like he's a damn cat. I'm just like. <laughs> John, if you can't tell you Targaryen by now, girl, what's the tea? So he hopped on top of Dro he hopped on top of Ray Gall and went to tell you I got my whole life. Now, this is my second critique of this damn episode. I think that they should have had this shit should have happened maybe at episode um the end of episode three, maybe, or you know, the beginning of episode four. I don't think that he should have ridden this dragon so goddamn early in the season. I think that maybe they should have teased it, made him get more of a connection with Rhaegal as the episodes go along, and then maybe to save the day in episode three or something, or to change the situation around. He finally capitalizes on his relationship with Rhaegal, rides him, and then uses him to finish off. Um, or defend themselves against the fucking Night King. But uh, hey, I guess the writers, like I said, they want to get all this bullshit out the way so that they can continue on with the season and do as many twists and turns and red wedding type episodes as they can. But it was a really cool moment. It was a really cool sequence of holes. Uh, somebody put, oh my God, the internet is so fast. Somebody put a whole new world over. <laughs> over that scene and it was so funny girl them hoes really did look like Jasmine and Aladdin but it, it really gave me all my life to see um, Jon Snow barely managing to hold on to fucking Rhaegar it was so cute I was here for it I wasn't here for the timing but I definitely was here for Jon Snow riding a dragon girl but I really did get my life when they were flying through the caverns and shit somebody said um, that the talk that Daenerys had with Jon Snow kind of re reflected what Egret said to Jon Snow while they were in the cave and shit. They were just like, well, girl, we could stay here forever. That shit never works out. Egret was also killed by an arrow. So, I like... <laughs> good for my good sense. <laughs> I also thought it was so cute when Drogon and Rhaegar were staring at their asses making out. It was just like, sis, I don't know if you know, but you playing with your auntie pussy right now and it's not really looking too good for you. You know what I mean? Drogon staring at their ass like this. Like, sis, you good? <laughs> but they're being super protected of their mama and I love it. I love that for them. Um, Arya and Gendry meet up. They trying to do this cute flirtation bullshit. Not before the hound came in and was just like, girl, you are a sad, cold ass bitch, but I guess that's why you like, you let me to die. Um, I don't know how far up the hound is still on Arya's list. Like, what's going on with that? <laughs> but I, so I love that fucking cute ass um, reunion between Gendry and Arya. And I like that Gendry's in the fucking forge making dragon glass weapons because they're definitely going to need it. Sansa and Jon start arguing about Daenerys and just like, girl, what's the tea? Girl, what's, I'm so mad, girl. She came in here. You bent the fucking knee. These motherfuckers don't want to support us anymore because your ass done bent the knee to the Targaryen witch bitch. Bitch, I can't believe you did that shit. Jon Snow's like, I hate that y'all bitches are complaining. Like, y'all y'all are fucking complaining. And we got dragons, we got armies and shit. Because without her, we would be out of here. But Sansa's concerns also do hold merit. So I can't, like I said, I can't really drag Sansa too bad for that shit. Moving right along. Daenerys, Daenerys was doing her PR stretch. I guess she talked to Olivia Pope and said, girl, you need to walk around Winterfell, try to make some friends, try to make some connections. Because these girls are not feeling your ass right now. So Daenerys walked up into the, one of the, the, the library at Winterfell. And of course, Sam's sitting there reading through shit. And Daenerys like, hey sis, what's the tea, girl? Thank you so much for saving Sir George, girl. Like, you really, we really appreciate you, honey. And Sam was like, oh my God, you're so you cool, queen. Thank you. Oh my God. They start talking and talking like, I just need, I need to be pardoned for stealing some books. And Daenerys like, oh, it's okay, baby. You don't have to worry about that shit. And then Daenerys, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I also saw my dad's sword from his house, House Tarly. And, and Daenerys is like, hmm. <laughs> uh, you mean Randall Tarly? And he was like, uh, yeah, why? <laughs> and then I was like, girl, girl, I presented him with two options and he chose the Grim Reaper. So that's it. You know, I don't know what to tell you, bitch. And she just stood there like this. He didn't bend the knee, so. <laughs> Daenerys is a crazy bitch. That's why I like her. She didn't bend the knee, so I don't know what to tell you. And Sam was like, okay, it's okay. My brother will still be there. <laughs> It's over with. It's over with for your damn brother. And girl, that's what, even Dan and Dave said this, that's what kind of set him off. It's just like, damn, my brother too? Fuck. But I mean, to me, that's a little bit unrealistic. Maybe he would be kind of sad just because the idea of, the idea of the idea of his... <laughs> 
his, his father and his brother died, but his father and his brother treated him like fucking shit. His brother didn't defend him, and his father was a piece of shit. So I don't understand why he'd be so pressed about that shit, but he was. He ran out to Brandon. Brandon was sitting there like, girl, I, what's the tea? You mad? <laughs> Prepare to get even more mad, and you need to go ahead and tell, you need to tell Jon Snow that his ass is the fucking rightful heir to the Seven Kingdoms. Cause girl, this shit is about to be a goddamn mess around Winterfell. And, and Sam was like, are you serious? So he went to tell Jon Snow that shit. Jon was like, girl, this shit is treason. Are you, like, you mean to tell me my daddy lied to me my whole life? He wouldn't do that? All right, girl. All right, all right. But Sam was like, it's the truth. So what are you going to do with it? So I, like, and he asked a good question. Like, you are willing to give up your crown and your claim for the safety of your people. It, will Daenerys be able to do the same? And that's a very good question because all her life, her life has only been about the Iron Throne. So we'll see what decisions she decides to make. And that scene was also interesting because Ned Stark told Jon Snow that the next time he sees him, he will, he will tell him about his mother. And it was interesting that he was learning about his mother and his heritage in front of um, Ned Stark's statue at the crypt. So that was very poetic. And the scene with people getting freaked out, tormented, and I think it was the Umbers and shit, they got their shit rocked. At the last hearth, we been, we been knew that shit was gonna happen. He left a, a hieroglyph there looking like a Targaryen sigil, but I'm not gonna go too far in that shit because I do think that the Night King is a Stark. Girl, that little boy, Mr. Umber, starts screaming. Barry Gondarian put that sword in his ass and he, he burned for quite a minute. I was just like, damn, is this Shireen again? Like, what's <laughs> The real gag of the century is that is the fact that Jamie Lannister arrived in Winterfell like this bitch, and he really thought that this hood would do to do him some justice. Girl, he hopped off that horse. He said, "Ah, oh, I'm here doing the right thing. I can't believe I made the right decision. I'm congratulating myself and I'm patting myself on the back." And Bran's in there just like this. He's sitting there just like this. I heard you bitches were looking for me, bitch. Here I go. I'm. I'm. I'm still here. <laughs> Jamie was like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. Now, I think Bran doesn't even have the capacity to be angry about that shit because he sees everything that happened. You know, he can sometimes see glimpses of what's to come. So he is a whole encyclopedia in his fucking forehead. He does not have time to be pressed about it. But we'll definitely see what happens. Now, in the trailer for the next episode, I also heard one, one thing that jumped out at me was that um, Daenerys was trying to read the shit out of Jamie Lannister because he, kill, he killed her father, her crazy ass father. Father. Now, that's going to piss me off. Daenerys is going to piss me off this season. If she thinks that her ass is going to be out here trying to drag people for killing King Aerys, for, for, for trying to burn down all the goddamn Westeros. Girl, sit, like, you didn't even know that nigga. She's like, Daenerys, please stop. Please stop while you're ahead. So I cannot wait for the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping that someone can reach out to Grey Worm um, so that he can have a seat on my face. And that will permit me to have an extremely good goddamn evening.